Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. I'm your host, Joshua Ryan. The newest Disney Plus Marvel series to hit the streaming service is Moon Knight, and this is one that fans have been ecstatic for, right? They've been wanting it, they've been needing it, they've been all over Twitter, all over Facebook just saying, give it to me, I have to have it. And that's largely because he has a huge following in the world of comics. Marvel fans know Moon Knight, and they love him. They want to see a live action adaptation, and he's supposed to be something unlike anything we've seen in the MCU so far. He's extremely different from Iron Man, way different from uh, Captain America, Spider-Man, he's something new, and that's what Marvel fans want right now. They want something unique. And he's also a character who has not been introduced yet. So we're getting a new story, uh, an origin of sorts. And fans, they're ready for it. I was given the first four episodes for a review, so here's my thoughts. The character of Moon Knight in the comics is Mark Spector. He's a mercenary. Okay, he is a dangerous dude, a lethal man who is extremely skilled in combat, and he has killed a lot of people. Like, he has killed a lot of people. But one day, he finds himself in the midst of combat getting shot, and he is on his deathbed, and he's in a panic. So he escapes out, he kind of wanders out into the desert and finds himself at the tomb of the God of the Moon. And this is where he essentially dies, okay? But then as he makes a vow to the moon god, and the moon god makes a vow to him, he's given life to come back and act as the moon knight, and repent for all the death and all the murder and all the killing he has done by protecting the people, uh, the innocent people of the world. Okay, and this is where the character of Moon Knight comes. Now, interestingly, we don't see that in, in the series, at least not in the first four episodes. It kind of skips the origin and it just jumps right into, we've got Moon Knight going on. The series brings in some big names. Right off the bat, we have Oscar Isaac playing the titular role, and Oscar Isaac is awesome, right? People love this guy because he's an extremely talented actor and he's very charismatic. We've seen him in Star Wars, we've seen him in Ex Machina. He's all over the place and he is, he's perfectly cast here. He really does do, do the role justice, all right? But I think who really shines here is Ethan Hawke as Arthur Harrow, the villain of the story. Now, Ethan Hawke is a veteran, okay? He has been in Hollywood. He has been making movies and TV shows for a long time. He's one of the most uh, talented people that we have in the MCU at the moment, in my opinion. And he brings all that talent to the role of this villain just perfectly. He is a very calm and stoic type of villain, which I think are the most menacing, right? I mean, look at Jason from Friday the 13th. That dude's calm. He's just walking around, just wearing his mask. He ain't worried about much until he chops you up, just chopping up teenagers for doing dirty deeds around Camp Crystal Lake, right? That's kind of what we got here. He is calm. He talks to you. He talks reasonably. He doesn't shout. He doesn't scream. He doesn't, you know, make just vague threats. He is just a menacing dude. One thing that Marvel does really well with its villains is that the bad guys often have intentions that they think are good. They think that they are doing what is right and that they're just taking very extreme measures to do something that they think is what is best for society or the world. You gotta look at, you know, Thanos. Look at Killmonger. These are bad guys who were going to kill a lot of people, but in their minds, they were doing it for the greater good. And that is also what we have here with Ethan Hawke's character. Okay, he is doing something very, very bad, but in his mind, He's been wronged. In his mind, what he is doing is for the greater good. And those are kind of the scariest villains, right? Because you can't convince them that what they're doing isn't right. You can't convince them that killing innocent people is wrong because in their mind, that's a drop in the bucket for the greater good. Now, the one thing that Moon Knight fans have been looking forward to most is that this is supposed to be extremely different. That's one thing everybody has been saying. This is unlike anything we've seen in the MCU. It's dark, it's bloody, it's gory. Well. It's not. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. What I got from this series was that it was kind of more of the same. There was still a lot of witty banter, still a lot of quips, a lot of cheesy humor, which listen, I'm not bashing it. I love the MCU, but it's not different. It's it's fitting right into that same formula that we've seen time and time again from other movies and series. Um, now, as far as this being a more violent series, I, I don't really think so either. There's guns, sure, but guess what? There's been guns in Captain America. There's been guns in, you know, Black Widow. The use of guns isn't anything new. Is there more killing? Maybe there's more killing, uh, but it's not done in some crazy, over-the-top, gory, dark, gritty way like a lot of people are expecting. It's done kind of in line with what you would see from Sony's Venom, right? Venom eats a lot of people, he kills a lot of people, but you don't look at it and say, whoa, that's like intense, that's gory. No, because it's done in kind of just a, a cartoonish almost type of way, and that's kind of what we're getting here. Now, I'm not bashing the show, I'm just saying it's, it did not live up to what I think was expected and what was almost kind of promised because it's, 
It's just more of the same, but in a new setting. Okay, so we go to Egypt in this series. Now this series focuses a lot on Egyptian gods and Egyptian mythology, which is really cool, but again, it's not necessarily anything new. We've seen gods in Eternals. We see gods in Thor. I mean, Thor is literally the god of thunder, right? And we've seen uh, lots of other gods throughout those series. So that, again, is nothing new. Where I've really got to give it to this series is, okay, Moon Knight's costume looks amazing. The costume of Moon Knight looks fantastic, and it's it's largely, or it's all CG, or at least it appears to be, but it's not in a way that's distraction, okay? He does look intense. He does look like somebody that I would be afraid of, and when the action hits, it does hit in a way that you say, okay, Moon Knight is a bit of a badass. Like, he is a skilled fighter. He's He's got to be one of the most skilled fighters that we've seen in the MCU, because he just can take out just about anybody. And he's also, uh, essentially, to a certain extent, you know, invulnerable. His suit acts as a healing mechanism, and he basically gets the powers of the moon god. So he, he's... He's inhuman when he's in form, when he is in the costume, and those elements really do work when they're in action. When you see Moon Knight just taking on some bad guys, slashing, punching, kicking, it's it's entertaining, it's, in, it's invigorating. There's a lot of moments in this show that just kind of drag on. There's a lot of moments in this show that I feel like ah, the pacing is off. I'm not saying that this has to be some big action-packed series, because that's not true. Of course, we like some good character development. I like a good, you know, conversation that is relevant to the story, and it does have a lot of that, but the pacing of it is off, where it feels like there's long moments of not a whole lot of interesting stuff happening. There's long stretches of moments where it's, it's just not super interesting. Uh, I personally, I think calling something boring is a terrible critique. Uh, if you're bored by something, that's not necessarily the, the movie's problem or the show's problem. It can be a problem with your expectations or your interpretation of what you're watching. So I'm not saying it's boring, but there, there were long segments of things that just weren't super interesting. They didn't grab my attention. And they would have these long spans of kind of uninteresting moments with some intermittent action, and the action does hit hard in a couple moments, and then there are some times where the action is just kind of meh. You know, it's a CGI fest, right? It's a CGI fest, which we've come to expect from Marvel, and the CGI is hit or miss here as well. Now, the character does explore some interesting concepts, because what happens with Mark Spector is uh, you hear a lot of inner dialogue, a lot of inner debate between him, between the Moon God, and between his other personality. There's like three people in this head all talking to each other, all yelling at each other, which is another reason that it did feel pretty reminiscent to Venom. A lot of this series kind of reminded me of Venom, and a lot of that's because there was the humor mixed in with the action. The action, uh, even when it did go, you know, kind of dark, dark, because I never really thought it got dark, but what people are calling dark with, you know, killing people, it wasn't done in a dark manner. It was still done in kind of a light cartoonish way. Um, and then the inner dialogue of arguing, of saying, you can't kill this guy inside your head and saying, no, I gotta kill this guy. Kind of like how Venom and Eddie Brock argue back and forth. Now listen, I know I'm coming at this show with a lot of negatives, but I really think that a part of that is just because expectation and hype was up so high. Um, it is... It's a fun watch, okay? This is a decent show. It is a fun watch, and you know what? If you're just watching this because you love Moon Knight and you just want to see this character kick some butt, you're going to like it. It gives you that. But if you're going into this thinking that this is going to be a new direction for the MCU, this is going to show you things that you've never seen before, that's not going to happen, at least not in the first four episodes. There are six episodes, so there are still two more to come. And... Those two episodes might blow us away, but at that point, is that too little too late? Like, starting off on episode five and six, just really ramping it up a notch, that's, we've already gone through four episodes. Now, keep in mind, I haven't disliked a single Marvel Disney Plus series. I haven't disliked any of them. But if I was going to rank this show amongst those series, I would say at the very top is either Loki or WandaVision. Let's go Loki, okay? Loki, WandaVision, uh, Hawkeye... Uh, what if, then I'm going to put, then I'm going to put Moon Knight, and then at the very bottom, I'm going to put Falcon and Winter Soldier. Sorry, Anthony Mackie. I didn't think that show was fantastic either. But all in all, I would still give this series, uh, you know, a passing score. Like, this still gets, gets by saying, yeah, it's good. Like, if I was rating this, I would still say, it's good. If that's all I had to say, a simple good or bad, no, I would say, no, it's good, but it's not great. It's not terrible, it's not great, it's gonna fit in kind of right there in the middle. It has some high points, it has some low points, which is to be expected with any series. Uh, 
But this just felt like a disappointment. It felt like a missed opportunity because Moon Knight is a character that could have come in and just revamped the MCU. Moon Knight is a character who could have come in and just wowed fans. And I think some fans, especially those hardcore fans, will be wowed. Because like I said, the costume looks fantastic and he does kick butt. He is just, you know, an, he's a really cool character. But as far as the story that this character is involved in, as far as the execution of that story, I think it's just mid-grade, right? I'd give this a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. And again, I liked it. So don't hate me in the comments, because that's what always happens. I posted my Twitter reaction saying I thought it was okay, and people ripped me to shreds telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't, but I think that I do. So be sure to stay tuned. Okay, the series premieres Disney Plus March 30th. You're gonna want to see it, even if even if you're not a Moon Knight fan, you're gonna wanna see it if you're a hardcore MCU fan, just because you gotta watch them all, right? It's like Pokemon, you gotta watch them all, all right? So drop us a follow on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned for more great content.